and the member of the BJP National Parliamentary Board and uh, ex-Chief Minister of uh, Karnataka, respected B.S. Yadrapaji, our very dynamic Chief Minister who is leading the state, Sri Basavraj Bomaiji, our very active and uh, people and workers friendly president, Sri Nalin Katilji, our uh, minister in the central government, and my colleague in the Lok Sabha, Sri Prahlad Joshiji, my senior colleague, ex chief minister, and an ex minister in the government of India, Sri Sadanand Gauraji. Uh, Minister in the Government of India and the Chairman of the Campaign Committee, Kumari Shobha Karan Lajeji, Sri Ashwat Narayan Swamiji, Sri Bhagwat Kubaji, Sri K. Sudhakarji, Arvind Limbavaliji, Narayan Swamiji, K. S. Naveenji, senior members on the dais and the friends from the media, print media and electronic media. It is indeed a matter of great opportunity for me. A few minutes back, I got the opportunity to release the manifesto of the Bhatiya Janta Party for the ensuing elections in Karnataka. First of all, as uh, my colleague Sudhakarji said, that this manifesto has not been formulated, drafted, or the content has not been created in any air-conditioned room. A due exercise has been done, and after a great amount of toil and perseverance by our workers, who visited every nook and corner of the state, got the suggestions, and connected to the thousands of a household, thousand hundred households, that this content has been created, which is in the form of this manifesto. Here I would also like to remind you that when Yadrapaji took over, and later on Mr. Bomai continued, and when the baton was handed over to him, I can say that the Bharatiya Janata Party government converted the calamity into an opportunity. The pandemic of COVID-19, the floods, all that was converted into an opportunity. And if you are speak in Hindi, I'll say, Aapada ko afsar mein badalne ka kaam Yadrapa ji aur Bhumai ji ne kiya. And because of that, we can say that now Karnataka is reaching a one trillion economy that we have to understand. One thing more I would like to say here is about the six years of the Indian National Congress misrule, where the good work done by Bharatiya Janata Party was, was a great setback because of the reverse care government of Siddharamaya which ruled the state. We should also remember that during Siddharamaya's regime, it was the looting of the natural resources. It was letting the criminal and anti-social elements run amok and appeasing a certain section of the society only to consolidate their vote bank and playing the politics of vote bank. When I talk about the reverse gear government, we remember 2014 to 2019, where all the good policies of Prime Minister Modi's government was brought to halt in Karnataka. And that was the black day when the Karnataka saw. Here I would like to explain in detail also, because you will say that I'm giving a very passing sweeping statement. But it is not a passing sweeping statement. I would like to give you and quantify my contention, which I'm saying. And when I say so, I will say tab or ab, then and now, we have to understand the difference. And utilizing the opportunity, I would like to make it very clear 
that when Prime Minister Modi had asked about the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi, where the people of Karnataka were to get the benefit of it, the Siddharamaya government sent the names and the number of the names of the Kisan and the farmer was on record 1717. This is called halting the development. This is called using the brakes and becoming an obstacle between the people and the government of India for the good policies which is being pursued by Prime Minister Modi. And here I would like to also suggest to you that now, when Yadurappa ji came to the power, and later on the baton was handed over to Mr. Bomai, 15,000 crores have been spent for 54 lakh farmers, where 6,000 is being given in Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi, uh, Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi, and 4,000 is given as a top-up by Bomai government, by Yabadarupa government, and 10,000 rupees is given to 54 lakh farmers of, of uh, uh, Karnataka. This is a classic example of double engine government. If I talk about Yashasmi scheme, which was started by my very senior leader, whom we are very proud of, Mr. Yadurappa, that Yashasni scheme was scrapped by Congress party. And in 2018, the insurance scheme was scrapped and it was only revived by the Bharatiya Janata Party government and it ensured a registration of 32 lakh farmers. So we have to understand what do we mean by double engine. If we have got double engine, there is a trouble engine. We are there for development, they are for the reverse care. We are there to give the pace to the development, they are there to put brakes to the, to the, to the development. That we have to understand. If I talk about the Bhagya Lakshmi Yojana, it was for a secure future of the girl children, girl child, and giving 3,000 rupees annual fixed deposit in their name. Almost 3 lakh beneficiaries, women were there, 3 lakh children were there. And when the Congress government came, that is the Siddha Ramiya's most anti-people government came, then the Bhagya Lakshmi scheme was reduced to 65,000. And when again Yadurappa ji came to power and Bomai ji came to power, now I'm happy to share with you that almost 3 lakh children are insured under Bhagya Lakshmi Yojana. This change has taken place. If I talk about foreign direct investment, I am happy to share with you. When I say that it's a one trillion economy Karnataka is uh, reaching, I would also like to share that Karnataka is now, under the leadership of Yerrapa ji and Bomai ji, is now uh, where the foreign direct investment is. Karnataka is number one in foreign direct investment. And in Congress regime, it was 1,75,000 lakh crores and now it is 3,21,000 lakh crores that we have to understand. If I talk about the average irrigation budget, it was 11,600 crore during Congress regime, and now it is 21,201 crore, which is an increase of 80% that we have to understand. If I talk about the establishment of health and wellness centers, I was the health minister at that point of time when Zizinda Ramayaj was the chief minister. And with a lot of push by the government of India and by the support of government of India, the Congress regime could only open 548 health and wellness centers were operationalized. But under Bomaiji's regime, health and wellness centers has reached the number of 8,618. This is the pace of the government in the health sector that we have to understand. During Congress regime, there was a breakdown of law and order, and the PFI was given a free hand to terrorize people, and you'll be astonished to know that Bengaluru became the second most unsafe city for women in India. And this was the, the time when Mr. Siddharamaya withdrew 175 criminal cases against PFI. Popular Front of India. 
But when BJP came, PFI was banned, NIO was given a free hand, and 41,000 security cameras were installed across the city, enhancing women's safety. I'm giving you the, the statistics, the data, which says that how we are working and how we want to bring the change. When I talk about the double engine, we are delivering best without rest and the achievements of the government of India and government of Karnataka I would like to share with you. Bumaiji started this Raita Vidya Yojana and 725 crore worth scholarship of 11 lakh children were given to farmers' sons, landless, uh, to, to the farmers, to the landless, to the laborers, to the weavers, to the fishermen, to the cab drivers, to the auto rickshaw drivers under the scheme of Vidya Nidhi Yo scheme, which is Vidya Nidhi Yojana. If I talk about the development, as uh, Mr. Bobai had talked about, that the farmers are getting 10,000 per year, in which 15,000 crores is being directly transferred to the Kisan, 6,000 from the government of India, 4,000 from the government of Karnataka, which comes to 10,000 rupees per, uh, per year that we have to understand. The revolutionary changes have taken place. We have talked about the economic nyay, justice, economic justice, and now we are talking about the social justice. It was a long pending demand, but it was under Prime, uh, Chief Minister Bomeji that the SC got the reservation, scheduled caste got the reservation enhanced from 15% to 17%, 2% enhanced. And the ST got from 3% to 7% and 4% was enhanced. The Wokalengas reservation was enhanced by 2%. The Lingayats reservation was enhanced by 2% under the 2D category and the Wokalengas in the 2C category. And here I would like to say justice to all, appeasement to none. And so the unconstitutional reservation given to minorities was repealed. This we have to understand. And the double engine sir, the government delivered justice to the long pending issues. I'm talking about the long pending issues, which no government had the audacity to even touch these issues. They ignored it once, once for all. But when BJP government came, we tried to resolve and the Upper Bhadra lift irrigation project, which was allocated the first installment of 5,300 crores and by the union budget. And the same way, Kalasa Banduri project, the state budget gave 1,000 crores. And if I talk about the Upper Krishna phase three, 5,000 crores were given and were allocated. The same way, expedited the Bengaluru suburban railway pending for 40 years, for four decades and 15,000 crores for it was allocated. The same way, the long pending 3,526 unrecorded Lambani Tandas and Kurba Hatis were declared as new revenue villages and they were given the Hak Patras, which we call as the Haku Patras, and 1,75,000 beneficiaries have benefited out of it. This I'm talking how, how the long pending, long standing demands have been meted out that I'm sharing with you. The same way the 5,000 crore rupees were given to KKRDB in the state budget in this year 2023-24 for formed Kittur Karnada Development Authority and after Modi government introduced the national education policy in 2020, I would like to share with you that the Karnataka government and the education department in implementing the national education policy is number one that we have to understand. The same way, one IIT, four medical colleges, seven medical universities, and two triple ITs have also been established in the state of Karnataka. If I talk about the Arogyakara Karnataka, the best state in the country, 
by establishing 8,618 health and wellness centers. 270 sanctioned Namma clinics have started functioning, including 108 in the Bangalore itself. If I talk about, which uh, Bomeji also talked about, is about the 1 crore 38,000 Ayushman Bharat Arogya Karnatak have been issued. Here you see the Ayushman Bharat and the Arogya Karnataka, both together, have taken care of the common man that we have to understand. And 37 lakh poor people have availed this facility. If I talk about the super specialty, you will be astonished to note that the super specialty hospital in Kumta, multi specialty hospital in Tirsi, eight super specialty blocks costing 150 crore in Karnataka, Institute of Medical Sciences, Hubli and critical care blocks in Kolar, in Balkot, Bagalkot, in Yadgiri, in Gadak, in Chikmangaluru, Ramnagra, Vijayanagra, and Doda Balapura have been established that we have to understand. If I talk about the Karnataka, which attracted 3.21 lakh, as I said, in the FDI, foreign direct investment, I'm, I would like to share with you how, how things work and how governments work. It was in 2008 that the Shimoga Airport, the foundation stone was laid. And in 2013, when Sitaramiya came, it was full brakes were applied. From 2013 to 2019, not even one brick was put in Shimoga Airport. And in 2019 to 2023, only in a short span of four years, Shimoga Airport was dedicated to the people of Karnataka. That we have to understand. If I talk about the uh, uh, airports, certainly I would like to share with you that the Kalaburgi uh, Airport is operational and now uh, six airports are being constructed. The same way, Tumkot, Chitradugra, Davangiri Railway Line, Bagalkot, Kudachi and Gadagwadi railway line are expedited. Historic increase in railway budget has been nine times that we have to again understand the development part has taken place. The Vande Bharat train, which started in South India from Mysore, Bangalore to uh, Chennai, is again a very classical example of the development of modern India and the connectivity which we, 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 we are certainly going to witness, we have, which we have certainly witnessed. We have also, I would like to share here, that we have talked about infrastructure, we have talked about health, we have talked about education, we have talked about social justice, we have talked about economic development, but here we have also taken care of historic steps to protect and revive the glorious culture of Karnataka and the Kannadigas. And for that, anti klaus Cow Slaughter Act was passed in 2021. Anti-conversion law was passed in 2022. Undertaking comprehensive development of Anjanadri Hill, which is the birthplace of Anjaniya Swami, Sri Anjaniya Swami, 100 crore has been allocated for it. And the Anubhav Mantapa, six.
112 crores for the honor of the Sri Basveshwara and again undertaking the construction of the majestic Rama Mandira at Ram Nagara. All this shows how we have tried to revive the historic culture of Karnataka and the pride of the Kannadigas that we have taken care of. Now, introducing the manifesto, coming to the manifesto, you'll say that I've gone a long way only to give you the background. What does the seriousness of a manifesto mean? Why I've elaborated and elucidated all these points in, in detail? Because you should understand that how governments work, who are the people behind putting the brakes in the development of Karnataka? Who are the people who have got, a, who shed their crocodile tears and the reality is something different? Who are the people who are anti-Karnataka and, and Kannadiga? That we have to understand. And that is why I elucidated it with facts and with data in front of you. But when I introduce this manifesto, which is, as we call it, as the Prajaya, BJP ya Praja, Praja pra, Pranalike, which means it is a people's manifesto. And when I say that it is Pranalike, the people's manifesto, it is built on the solid foundation of development. It is a manifestation of the double engine government, how the double engine work, government works. This manifesto is futuristic and is a vision document which fulfills the Prime Minister Modi ji's vision of Viksit Bharat, developed India. And the same way, it also sh shows the, the prosperity and the Naya Karnataka during the Amrit Kal in the next 25 years. So this is the foundation which we have taken care in this manifesto. Here I would also like to share with you that the manifesto is different from the Congress which talks about guarantees, which has an outdated warranty. Where everything, you know, they talk about guarantee which has got an outdated warranty. They have never given anything. They have only talked about it. But when we say we, we mean it and it is the manifesto which is forward-looking document, it contains a realistic, achievable promise which will fulfill the aspirations of Karnatakas, youth, farmer, women, weavers, middle class, SC, ST communities, and also the all sections of the society will be taken care of. Our manifesto is centered around six themes. And these six themes are 6A. Number one is Anna, which means food security. Number two is Akshara, which means quality education. Arogya, which means affordable and accessible health care. Adaya, which means assured income support and abhaya social justice for all and avirudhi means development prosperity for all under this six schemes six schemes the our manifesto is centered around and through this vision document we have tried to restore the prosperity of karnataka and the glory days of the vijayanagara empire that is what we want. And for that, it is the foundation which we are, with, through this manifesto, we are keeping and we are trying to see that in the next 25 years, how do we go forward? And when I say so, I would also like to say that it is a double engine sarkara where both the engines, and I will not say only double engine, it is a powerful engine also that we have to understand. We have got double engine, we have got powerful engine, there you had a trouble engine, and there you had a reverse gear engine. That you have to understand. And only applying brakes was there. When I talk about the Anna, the food security, we will provide, as uh, Bomay Saab said, that we will be providing three free cooking gas cylinders to all BPL families annually, one each during the months of 
Yugadi during Ganesh Chaturthi and Deepavali. The same way, we will set up an Atal Ahar Kendra in every ward of every municipal corporation in the state to provide affordable, quality, and healthy food across the state. We will launch the scheme called Poshana, the screen through which every BPL household will be provided with a half a litre Nandini milk every day and 5 kg of Sri Anna, which is the Sri Dhanya, along with 5 kg of rice uh, will be provided to all BPL families in the monthly ration kit. The same way, if I talk about Abhaya, the social justice for all, we will implement uniform civil code in Karnataka based on the recommendations given by high-level committee which is to constitute for this purpose. We will also launch the Sarva Rigu Suru Yojana under which Revenue Department will identify and distribute 10 lakh housing sites across the state to all the sightless, homeless beneficiaries. We will also launch the Onake Obawe, Obawa Samajik Nyaya Nidhi, a scheme through which we will provide a matching grant, a deposit of 10,000 on five-year fixed deposit made under the scheme for women of SC and ST households. Under this scheme of social justice, we will improve the ease of living of the apartment residents in Bengaluru and elsewhere by constituting a Karnataka Residents Welfare Consultative Committee to reform the Karnataka Apartment Ownership Act of 1972 and to modernize the grievance redressal mechanism. If I talk about the Akshara, the third main pillar and the theme, which is the quality education, we will introduce Vishweshwaraya Vidya Yojana, Yojane, under which state government will partner with individuals and with institutions for holistic upgradation of the government schools and to make them top class standards. We will launch a Samanava scheme which will, in collaboration with SMEs and ITIs, and generate dynamic ecosystem of education and employment for all talented young professionals. We will provide a career support to all aspirational youth for providing financial incentives for students to pursue their coaching in IAS, in KS, in banking, and in government jobs. As far as the Arogya is concerned, which we call as the affordable and accessible health care, we will strengthen the public health care infrastructure through Mission Swastha Karnataka by establishing one Namma clinic equipped with diagnostic, diagnostic facilities in every ward of municipal corporation. Additionally, we will provide a free and annual master health checkup for senior citizens for abridhi, prosperity, and development for all, we will establish SCR, State Capital Region in Bengaluru, encompassing the comprehensive city development strategy, cohesive transportation networks, and cutting edge digital integration. Transform Karnataka into a premier hub. Electric vehicles will be given their full support, and by setting up Charging stations supporting 1,000 startups. We'll be supporting 1,000 startups for converting and, and also converting BMTC buses into fully electric buses and creating EV city outside the Bangalore. We'll set up 30,000 crore for K Agriculture Fund to establish micro cold storage facilities, agro processing units in all gram panchayats, undertake modernization and digitization of APMCs, accelerate 
farm mechanization, establish five new agro-industry clusters and three new food processing parks supported by 1,000 strong FPOs. As far as the Adaya is concerned, assured income support, we will allocate 1,500 crore to develop Kalyan circuit, Banwasi circuit, Parshurama circuit, Kaveri circuit, and Ganga Pura Sir corridor to transform Karnataka into India's most favored tourist destination. We'll also broaden the scope of the production linked incentive scheme by incorporating a comprehensive plan that encompasses logistics, industrial clusters, connectivity, and export facilities, generating 10 lakh manufacturing jobs beyond Bangalore outside Bangalore. I'm not talking about Bangalore, but outside in, this, in the uh, rural areas that we are going to do. We'll see to it that Karnataka's rich culture and the land of culture is fully enriched and supported by the government schemes. Friends, these are the six themes under which we have tried to see to it that all schemes are taken and undertaken.